In this project, we'll make a toned ground charcoal still life drawing. You'll set up five objects in your studio as your subject. Choose objects that have large volumes, such as bowls, glasses, stuffed animals, mugs, fruit are all good subjects. Light the objects with a single light source, such as a desk lamp or a flashlight. Take the picture in your house at night and turn off all the other lights in the room except for the single light source to get the most dramatic lights and shadows. You will need a piece of 18 by 24 white drawing paper, fine charcoal, as well as compressed charcoal, charcoal pencil, as well as various erasers, including a kneaded eraser. To make a toned ground charcoal drawing, we'll start with a stick of soft vine charcoal. Vine charcoal looks slightly different than the square blocks of compressed charcoal in that they are round and irregular. It's important to use the vine charcoal in this step and not the compressed charcoal because the vine charcoal will allow you to race and establish the highlights as we get into the detail of the drawing. Take the broad side of the vine charcoal and rub it in a circular motion until it covers the entire surface of the 18 by 24 white paper. Then take either an artist chamois cloth or a clean paper towel and rub the vine charcoal into the fibers of the paper. The goal is not to remove the charcoal, but to tone the paper with it until it is a light gray. This will allow us to draw with erasers as well as the charcoal. Print out the photo you took of the still life and draw vertical and horizontal lines through the center of the image. This will help you block in the drawing on the 18 by 24 paper. On your toned paper, lightly freehand in the same horizontal and vertical lines through the page so that they more or less match the photo. Take a stick of vine charcoal and start to sketch in the drawing. As you draw, frequently check proportions and use the paper towel or chamois cloth to make corrections. When we work from a photograph, we can use a simpler version of the sighting technique. Since the image is already flattened out, we don't need to close one eye and can simply hold our sighting stick up directly to the photo com to compare heights and widths. It's important in this part to still be using the vine charcoal so you can erase and easily make corrections. Find the terminator lines on each of the objects. I played with a contrast in the photo to exaggerate how the light source shows us where the terminator line is in each object. The terminator line is the point at which the object turns away from the light source and into shadow. The most important thing this tells us is where the form shadow of the object is. The form shadow is the most important shadow on the object. It reveals the essential shape and form of the subject, and it is also the darkest part of the object. The only darker parts will be the cast shadows, most of which will be below or to the side of the drawing. As you're shading, look for another more subtle feature that will really help give your drawings a full sense of volume. Reflected light is what appears between the form shadow and the cast shadow on an object. Reflected light can range from being barely perceptible to being very pronounced. Reflected light is what happens when light bounces back up from the surface and casts a dim light on the bottom of an object. Remember that reflected light will never be anywhere near as bright as the highlights, but are an important detail to add to your work. Use a charcoal pencil to lightly shade in the form and cast shadows. Make the shading flat and light and go from one object object to another without getting into too much detail yet. Don't get too dark too fast in a charcoal drawing and keep moving around the page. You can also introduce the blocks of compressed charcoal for larger areas such as the cast shadows. Now use a blending stump or a rolled up paper towel to go back into the form shadows and refine them. 
you'll be doing a lot of drawing with the blending stumps and they really can give you some nice soft shaded areas. Try not to use your fingers to smear the charcoal. The oils from our hands will stay on the paper and then make the charcoal not want to bind with the surface as we keep working. Now get out your erasers and start to find the highlights and half tones. On the light side of a form, look for two main values. The highlight, which will be the white of the paper, and the half tone, which is the average light area of a subject. Remember that the half tone is still the light part of the form, but will not be nearly as bright as the bright white highlights. You'll be using a pencil eraser and a white vinyl eraser to get sharp areas and the kneaded eraser to get softer, smoother edges and passages. With the kneaded eraser, you could constantly reshape it to fit the area that you want to get into. Really draw with the eraser just like you would with a charcoal pencil. And also use the blending stump to go into further detail in conjunction with the erasers. When you're reaching the end of the drawing, you'll be alternating between all of your drawing tools, using the sharp erasers to get fine detail, and going back over many areas with more charcoal pencil, as well as the blending stump. Charcoal drawing is a process of weaving layers of the material until you find the right balance that you're happy with. Step back from the drawing frequently and decide if certain areas can use more or less value. When you're ready to submit your drawing, be sure to include the picture you took of your still life arrangement along with the photo of the completed drawing.